a 1960s suicide house, an elegant dinner party. This isn't a typical scary story, but just a really odd situation that happened to me back about 1997. In the late 90s and early 00s, I worked doing trauma scene work. I was a supervisor of a crew that you never see or hear about, but what we did was go into homes, buildings or structures after a homicide, suicide, accidental death and situations like that. Sometimes they were very gruesome, and sometimes it was a, as simple as removing a chair and cutting out the carpet. Oftentimes it involved a lot of cleaning and removal to sanitize the scene both visually and biologically. Our goal was to leave the scene as void as possible, like if you didn't know what had happened there, you would just assume that it was under renovation. This one time, it was about midday, so not the usual middle of the night, come clean up after a dead body call. I don't know why the police and fire departments always waited till night to call us out, but I would say 80% of the time, that is how it happened. The day was a bright, sunny, not so warm day in a suburb of Los Angeles. I won't give the exact details of the location for privacy or that I even remember exactly which street it was on, but I do know it was an older, yet very wealthy area of Los Angeles. The kind of neighborhood where you expect doctors, business executives, or people in the entertainment industry to live in. As we pulled up to this home, it was a huge spread of mid-century modern with fancy landscaping and a long curved driveway. The place looked very well kept and probably a showcase of the neighborhood back in the 1950-1960s. The typical scenario was I, being the supervisor, would approach the door while my crews waited by the trucks. Since this was supposed to be a small job, we only had my vehicle and our service truck. I remember seeing an old fancy Mercedes and what looked like an old Porsche in the driveway, no other cars, but maybe there were some in the garage that I didn't see. As I walk up to the door, an older woman answered my knock. She was probably in her mid-fifties, very well made up with lots of jewellery on and she was wearing something that reminded me of Mrs. Roper from Three's Company. Not cheap looking, just not in the 1990s style. I explained we were here for the cleanup work. I then noticed she had a drink in her hand like a martini or something. Like I said, this was the middle of the day and probably before lunch. Not unusual to find people drinking in a time like this. She leads me into this house. It's surprising dark and hazy with cigarette smoke inside. Now what happens next was really odd. The entire place looked like it was a time capsule from the, now what we would call the Mad Men era. The house wasn't what gave me the creeps, but as she is leading me to like a second den area, we pass through the front room, another living room, and a bar pool table area. Like I said, this house was huge, but there are a ton of people in the house, and well to describe them, they all looked like characters from some early 1960s movie. A guy with a sport coat, glasses, and boat captain's hat, a guy in a tuxedo, a lady wearing a fur collar long evening dress, other people there that looked like some weird collage of mixed people from some dinner party set back in some Rosemary's Baby movie set. The amount of people all throughout the house didn't add up. There were only two small cars in the driveway and one could only fit two people. Where did all these fancy people come from? There was a low mumble of different conversations from all around, with only an occasional glance at me as we are walking over to the scene. I remember one of those huge old cabinets with a record player playing Johnny Matthews. I know that because the it's not for me to say playing on the record was like I was about to walk into the twilight zone. We finally get to the room where the suicide happened. There was a red velvet chair that the deceased was in and it wasn't a gunshot, but I assumed it was a razor to the wrists. The lady is standing at the entry to the room. I'm looking over the scene and tell her we will remove the carpet and remove and dispose of the chair as it held most of the blood. She just nodded and still had her drink in her hand. I asked her if she could sign our work order and the release for disposal of personal property, meaning the chair. As she signs, she says, when you and your crew are finished, just see yourselves out. I told her it probably wouldn't take us more than an hour. She turned and walked away and back to her party. I make the journey back to the front door, through the Johnny Mathis record playing, through the cigarette smoke, and through the low tone party conversations. I go out to my truck and guys and tell them this one is creepy. There is a freaking party going on inside and everyone is dressed up. I lead my crew back to the room and they start bagging up the chair and cutting out the old blue carpet. The black stains were where the blood dripped down through it. And we ended up just cutting out half of the room of carpet and even straight cut across the room as to avoid having to move lot of big old furniture. 
We never found out who committed suicide, but I had assumed it was the lady's husband. As we were finishing up, I stayed behind in the room to take final photos, as was our protocol to take before and after photos. I thought about looking for the lady of the house, just to let her know we were finished, even though I got the impression we were to do what we needed, then leave and not bother her again. I still just wanted to give her confirmation. So, as I slowly walked again through the party areas, I noticed no one was making eye contact with me or even acknowledged my presence. You would think that if everyone at the party had known about the death, it would have been conversation or at least interest. I walk over to the front door and turn to look back at the party stuck in a time capsule and close the massive front door behind me. Driving away, I couldn't help but think, what a strange day, so bright and sunny outside. I wonder how many people knew we just cleaned up the remnants of someone's last moments on Earth. <laughs>